We now learn about binomial distributions. In particular, we learn about the probability distribution function, also known as PDF, for the binomial distribution. Now in just a minute, we're going to be using the formula that we see on the right hand side here. But before doing so, it's worth spending a minute or two to discuss the typical scenario in which we'll actually have to use it. So let's go ahead, I'll just write scenario here. Now we'll know we have to use the binomial distributions formula as soon as we're dealing with an experiment which is repeated n times. So I'll just write experiment repeated n times. We'll often speak of n trials. And each time we actually repeat the experiment, there will be two possible outcomes. Those being success or failure. So let me just write that as well. That's two possible outcomes. And those are success or failure. Now, we say success or failure, but I could also say win or lose or yes and no. So an example of that could be, let's say I'm rolling a die and I'm interested in rolling a six. Then each time I roll a six, that would be a success. And each time I roll anything other than a six, well, that would be a failure. Now, the probability of a success we'll simply call P. And since there are only two possible outcomes each time we repeat this experiment, the probability of a failure will be the complement. In other words, it will be 1 minus P. And in fact, we'll call that probability Q. So Q is equal to 1 minus P. And I should also say that each trial of this experiment is independent of the previous, meaning whatever the outcome of one trial, that won't affect the outcome of the next trial of the experiment. So I'll just write, trials are independent, are independent. There we go. Now here's the whole idea. When we repeat the experiment n times, we'll be interested in the number of successes we can get within those n trials. And to actually quantify things, we'll define a discrete random variable, which we'll call capital X, as the number of successes within the n trials. So I'll just write number of successes in n trials. So for instance, if we're rolling a die 10 times and we're interested in the number of sixes we can roll, then we would define the discrete random variable capital X as being the number of sixes we rolled in 10 trials of rolling the die. And to calculate the probability that X take on any specific value, we use the binomial probability distribution formula, which states that the probability that the discrete random variable capital X equals to some value R is equal to the binomial coefficient N R times the probability of a success, so that's P raised to the power of R times the probability of a failure. So remember that was Q raised to the power of N minus R. And I'll go ahead and box that formula. Do make a note of it. That's known as the binomial probability distribution function. And we'll sometimes call this binom PDF. In particular, our calculators will usually call this function binom PDF. All right, we now know the scenario for binomial distributions, as well as the probability distribution function, which will allow us to calculate probabilities. So now let's go ahead and actually work through an example. And I'll do that on the right-hand side here. I'll just write example. Now, let's say that we're dealing with a biased coin, which is such that when we flip it, the probability of flipping tails is 0 0.6. So I'll just write that. We're dealing with a biased coin, which is such that the probability of tails, so that's probability of tails, is P, which equals to 0 0.6. And let's say that we flip the coin five times, so I'll just write flip five times, and we're interested in finding the probability of flipping exactly three tails. So let me just write probability of flipping exactly three tails, with a question mark at the end. There. All right, let's see how to solve this. I'll just write solution here. Now, to begin with, it's important to realize that what we're dealing with here is a typical binomial distribution scenario, just like the one we saw at the beginning here. 
Indeed, we're dealing with an experiment which is being repeated five times. In other words, we can think of this five as telling us that the number of trials n is equal to five. And at each trial of this experiment, there are two possible outcomes. Either we flip tails or we flip heads. Furthermore, it's quite safe to assume that each trial is independent of the previous. Indeed, whether I flip heads or tails on any one flip is unlikely to affect the outcome of the next flip. And so, since we're being asked to find the probability of flipping exactly three tails, we can go ahead and define our discrete random variable capital X as being the number of tails flipped in five trials. So that's number of tails flipped in five trials. And defining capital X as the number of tails flipped is what tells us that the probability of 0 0.6 is the probability of a success. In other words, the probability of flipping tails on any one trial. The probability of a failure, therefore, which remember we defined as Q, will be equal to 1 minus 0 0.6, which equals to 0 0.4. And with that in mind, we can now use the binomial probability distribution function to state that the probability that capital X be equal to 3, in other words, the probability that the number of tails we flip equals to 3, is equal to the binomial coefficient 5, 3, times the probability of a success, so that's P raised to the power of 3, times the probability of a failure, so that's Q, raised to the power of 5 minus 3. Notice that all I have done here is copy the binomial probability distribution function that we boxed here, replacing every n that I could see by the number of trials, 5, and every r that I can see by the number of tails that we wish to obtain. Remember, that was 3. Now, since we know that p is equal to 0 0.6 and q is equal to 0 0.4, this p cubed will become 0 0.6 raised to the power of 3, and this q raised to the power of 5 minus 3 will become 0 0.4 raised to the power of 2. But what about this binomial coefficient 5, 3? Well, I'll just do that on the right-hand side here, and I'll put a little asterisk there to indicate it. Now, the binomial coefficient 5, 3, well, that's equal to factorial 5 over factorial 5 minus 3, times factorial 3. And that's equal to factorial 5 over factorial 2 times factorial 3. And that's equal to 5 times 4 times factorial 3 over factorial 2, which is just 2 times 1, times factorial 3. Now, the factorial 3s at the top and the bottom cancel out, leaving us with 5 times 4 over 2 times 1. And that's equal to 10. So this binomial coefficient 5, 3 is equal to 10. Now, if you're uncomfortable calculating binomial coefficients by hand the way I just did, let me reassure you by saying that most of the time when dealing with binomial distributions, it is more than likely that we'll be given a calculator. That being said, using these results, we can now state that the probability that capital X be equal to 3 is equal to 10 times 0 0.6 raised to the power of 3, which is 0 0.216, times 0 0.4 squared, which is 0 0.16. And by all means check, but using our calculators, we find that this equals to 0 0.3456. And that's the answer. To finish this tutorial, let me add one more thing. As soon as we have a discrete random variable, such as capital X, which follows a binomial distribution, like what we've just seen here, we'll often write this. Capital X, followed by a tilde symbol, followed by a capital B to indicate binomial, and in parentheses, N, P. And I'll just go ahead and box that as well. Now, what this means is that the value of the discrete random variable capital X follows a binomial distribution with n trials in which the probability of a success is p.
So for the example we've just seen, in which the discrete random variable was capital X, which was the number of tails flipped in five trials, we could write that capital X follows a binomial distribution with five trials in which the probability of a success is 0 0.6. And do make a note of that notation as it's often used in exam questions. All right, that being said, that's it for our first tutorial on binomial distributions. In our next tutorial, we'll look at a typical exam style question in which we use the binomial probability distribution function again. So do make sure to watch it. For now though, that's it for this tutorial.